Welcome to the lecture on writing equations of lines. I'm going to start by reviewing three different forms for the equation of a line. The first one is called the slope-intercept form, and this is the most useful form that we probably will have. It's y equals mx plus b, and it's used quite a bit for finding slopes. Remember that slope is this coefficient in front of the x, the m, and this um, equation of, the, the, of a line in slope-intercept form is also extremely use, easy to use and useful for graphing as well. All we have to do when we graph is plot our y-intercept, which is the b, and then use our slope as rise over run to get our graph. So slope-intercept form something you definitely want to have memorized, and we will use it quite a bit. The next form that we're going to talk about is the point-slope form. This one is probably a little less familiar, but it's also very useful. We're going to use this mainly when we want to write the equation of a line. So we're going to use this for writing equations of lines. The way it works is you will be given a point, which is this x1, y1. You'll be given a slope, which is the m and you'll substitute those three values in, leave y as y, leave x as x, and then you simplify this and you'll end up with the equation of the line that you're looking for. The third form that we're going to talk about and use today is the standard form. This is the form that looks like ax plus by equals to c. a, b, and c are integers. Remember, an integer is not a fraction or a decimal. And we also require that the leading coefficient of x, which is our a, must be a positive number. So a lot of times I will call this the pretty form. This is just a way to write the equation of a line using very nice looking numbers. Unfortunately, it's not very useful. It's hard to tell what the slope is. It's hard to graph from as well. So the first kind of problem that we're going to talk about today is how to find the equation of a line given two points. And this is definitely something you'll need to be able to do. So step one, when you're trying to find the equation of a line, is every line has a slope. So we need to find the slope between our two points. And to do that, we're going to use our slope formula, which is the change in y over the change in x. And remember, to find the change in y, you just subtract the two y coordinates. To find the change in x, you subtract the two x coordinates. Once we know our slope m, then we're going to use point slope form, plug in a y1, an x1, and an m, and then in step 3, we're going to simplify that and put it into the correct form that they are asking for. So let's try this out. In this first equation, first example, we want to find the equation of the line between negative 4, comma, negative 3, and 2, comma, 1. And we want to put our final answer into slope intercept form. So let's begin by first finding our slope. That's always step one. So to find the slope m, we're going to do change in y over change in x. So we're going to subtract our two y values. It doesn't matter which one you begin with. I'm going to start with the negative three first, and then subtract from that the negative, or excuse me, the positive one. So negative three minus the one. In the denominator, we're going to subtract our x's. Since I started with the negative 3, I need to start with the negative 4 on the bottom. And I'm going to subtract from that our 2. Now let's simplify. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4, and negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. A couple things to simplify here. Two negatives become positive, and 4 6 reduces to 2 thirds. So our slope m is two-thirds. Okay. Now that we have our slope, we're going to take that slope together with either one of our two points, and we're going to use point-slope form. So point-slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We're going to substitute in our y1, our x1, and our m. Now which x1, y1 should we use? It doesn't matter. I usually use the point that looks easiest, so in this case I might choose 2, 1, 
because it is it has more positive numbers than the other point but it should give you the same final equation regardless of which point you use so if I use the point 2 comma 1 then I'm gonna have y minus my y1 and in this point the y value is 1 my slope m that I found in step 1 was 2 thirds and then I want parentheses x minus my x1 and the x coordinate of the point that I'm using is 2. So there's my substitution. Step 3, we're going to simplify. And when we want to simplify here, remember we are trying to put our final answer in slope intercept form. So we want to simplify this to that y equals mx plus b form. So whatever we get from our point slope form, we need to rearrange some terms and get it in a slope intercept form which means ideally we want to solve for y. So to simplify this the first thing we would want to do is distribute our two-thirds across the parentheses to get rid of our parentheses. So we'd have y minus 1 on the left side two-thirds times x is two-thirds x minus on the constant on the end here we want two-thirds times two. Now to do that multiplication in your head without a calculator just think of 2 as 2 over 1 and remember that when we multiply fractions it's top times top over bottom times bottom so 2 times 2 will be 4 3 times 1 will be 3 so this is 4 thirds now to finish the problem we want to solve for y because remember we're trying to get it into that slope intercept form so if I add 1 to both sides then I'm going to get y by itself then I'm going to get my two-thirds x and over here I want to combine these two constants now negative four-thirds plus one you can certainly do that on a calculator or I'm going to do it by hand and since we're dealing with fractions I will need to have a common denominator the denominator that the first fraction here has is three so negative four-thirds I'm going to leave as negative four-thirds but I need to rewrite one as something with a denominator of three so that I can have a like denominator. What is one the same as? It's the same as three over three. So negative four-thirds plus one is going to be the same as negative four-thirds plus three-thirds and negative four-thirds plus three-thirds is minus one-third. So my final answer in slope intercept form is y equals two-thirds x minus one-third. Okay, let's try that again. In the next example, however, we want to put our final equation into standard form this time, which, remember, is that pretty form, ax plus by equals to c. We're still going to proceed the same way we did in the last example, but we're going to go one step further. We're going to take that equation we end up with and just put it into standard form. So step one again, finding the slope m. So to get m, we do change in y over change in x. So if I start with my 5, I'm going to subtract from that the 0. In the denominator, if I started with the 5, then I need to start with the 2 in the denominator. So 2 minus our negative 1. Simplifying, 5 minus 0 is 5. Double negative in the denominator, and that becomes 2 plus 1, or 3. So my slope m is 5 thirds. In step two, we're going to use point-slope form. So we want y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. Which point do we want to use? It doesn't matter. This time I'm going to use negative 1 comma 0 just because it has 0 in it, but really it doesn't matter which point you use. So my y1 is going to be 0. My m is that five-thirds that we just found in step one and my x1 is negative one notice here we're going to get a double negative in these parentheses and y minus zero just becomes y so I have y equals five-thirds parentheses x plus one now to finish simplifying that let's go ahead and distribute our five-thirds across five-thirds times x is five-thirds 5 thirds times 1 stays 5 thirds. Now we would be finished if the question was asking for the line in slope-intercept form because this is solved for y. However, 
we are asked to put it into standard form, which is that AX plus BY equals to C. So in order to put it into standard form, notice that standard form requires the X and the Y term to be on the same side of the equation. So to do that over here, we are going to need to move this X term over to the left side, and I can do that by subtracting it. So let me recopy my equation. I'm going to subtract 5 thirds X over to the left side. I'm going to put the X term first, because that's how it is in my standard form. Then we'd have that plus Y on the left side, and now we have 5 thirds by itself on the right side. So now at least we have the X and the Y together. The next thing we need to do is remember that in standard form you're not allowed to have fractions, so we're going to need to clear out our denominators, and we also don't want this leading coefficient in front of X to be negative, and right now it is. So how do we clear out our fractions and at the same time get rid of that negative? Well, to clear out the fraction, we can multiply through by 3, since that's the common denominator. At the same time, to get rid of this negative, I can multiply by a negative 3, and that will change all of my signs. So let's go ahead and do that. Negative 3 times negative 5 thirds. The 3's cancel out, the negatives cancel out, and all I have left is 5x. Now we need to do that same negative 3 times the y as well. So negative 3 times y is negative 3y. And on the right side, 5 thirds times negative 3. The 3's cancel out, and what I have left is the 5 and the negative, so this equals negative 5. So this is standard form because the x and the y are together, there's no fractions, and the leading term is positive. So we're done. Okay, in the next example, what we're going to be asked to do is find the equation of a line given the slope m and the y-intercept b. And this is actually very easy and simple to do because of that slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So if we know m and we know b, all we have to do is substitute in for these two values and we'll have the equation of our line. So for example, we want to find the equation of the line with slope two-thirds, so my m, which is my slope, is two-thirds, and I want to pass through the point zero comma negative one. The y value there is the b. How do you know that this is a y-intercept? Because a y-intercept always has x value equal to zero. So since this point has an x value of zero, then the y coordinate there must be the b. Now all we have to do is take these two numbers that we have and substitute them into our slope-intercept form. So this becomes y equals 2 thirds x, and b becomes negative 1. And there's the equation of my line. Okay, in the next example, what we're going to do is find the equation of a line given the slope m and any point. So all we have to do here, again, this isn't as difficult as it might seem, all we have to do is use the point-slope form. We're going to be given a point, and we're going to be given the slope, so it makes sense to use the point-slope form. So we're going to substitute in y1, x1, and m, and then we just simplify and put it into the correct form. So in this example here, it says find the equation of the line through negative 3 comma 0 with a slope equal to negative a half, put the line into standard form. So we're given the point negative 3 comma 0, that's our x1 and our y1. We're given a slope of negative a half, that's our m. So the first thing we're going to do is use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, since we know y1, x1, and m. So let's substitute in. We get y minus the y value of our point, which is 0, equals m. m was negative a half, parentheses, x minus the x value of our point was negative 3. Okay. Step 2 is to simplify this. y minus 0 becomes y. 
We have a double negative in our parentheses, so we get negative a half, parentheses x plus 3. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute that negative 1 half across, so I get y equals negative 1 half x. Negative 1 half times positive 3, remember we can think of 3 as 3 over 1, so top times top over bottom times bottom gives me negative 3 over positive 2, or minus 3 halves. So this would be done if the problem asks us to put our line in slope-intercept form. That's the form where you have it solved for y. But we are given standard form in this problem. So to solve for standard form, that means we need to write it in the form ax plus by equals to c. So we want to get the x's and the y's together. So the first thing I'm going to do to get my x's and y's together is add the x term over to the left side of the equation, and I'm going to put it in the front, in front of my y. So I get 1 half x plus that y equals, these are now gone, so all I have on the right side is negative 3 halves. The next thing I'm going to do once I get my x's and y's together is clear out any fractions that I have. So that would require multiplying by a common denominator, which in this problem is just 2. I don't have to worry about any negatives because the leading term in front of that x, that leading coefficient, is already positive. So all I have to do is clear out my fraction and then I should be done. So let's distribute our 2. 2 times a half is 1, or just 1x. 2 times y is 2y. And 2 times negative 3 halves, notice here the 2's are just going to cancel out, giving me negative 3. So my equation is x plus 2y equals negative 3. And there's my standard form. Okay, in the next type of example, remember all of these examples today are asking us to find equations of lines given various pieces of information. So in this problem, the information we're going to be given is a graph, and we're supposed to come up with the equation of the line just by looking at the graph. So the way we're going to do that, step one here, is by finding the slope first. You can't write the equation of a line unless you know its slope. So how do you find slope from a graph? Well, you find two good points. And remember, by good points, I mean two points that line up very nicely on the grid marks so you know exactly what their coordinates are. Once I identify those two good points, I'm going to count the rise over run that it takes to go from one point to the next. Once I know that, I know my slope m. That's step one. Step two, if we know m, let's find b and then we can use that slope intercept form. So step two is finding that b. And the b is the y intercept. So I'm just going to look on the y-axis and see where that line crosses the y-axis. And that will be my b. Then all I have to do is substitute into y equals mx plus b, and I'll be done. So here's my graph. Let's find our slope first by identifying two good points. It doesn't really matter which two you choose as long as you know their coordinates. I'm going to choose these two right here. So to calculate the slope m, I need to count the rise, which is going up and down, over the run, which is going side to side. I'm going to start at the bottom point. It doesn't matter which one you start with, but I'm going to start with the lower one and work my way up to the higher point. So if I start at the lower one, I need to go up one, two units. And I'm, since I'm going up, that's a positive two. So that is called my rise. My rise is plus 2. To get over to my point, I'm going to have to go over 1, 2, 3 units to the right. Going to the right is also positive, so my run is plus 3. So this simplifies to 2 thirds. So now we know that our slope m is 2 thirds. Next thing we would like to know is our b. Remember, b is your y-intercept, and you can tell that from a graph by just looking to see where the graph crosses the y-axis. That's what it means to be a y-intercept. And we can see, because that's exactly this point that I already have circled right here, what is the y-value of that point? Well, it's 3 units up, so b must be 3. 
So I know my M, I know my B, all I need to do, to do now is substitute those two numbers in to my slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So this becomes y equals 2 thirds x plus 3. And there is the equation of my line. This problem did not specify which form to use, so it's always safe to put your equation of, of your line in slope-intercept form unless they specify standard form or some other form. All right, the next example that we're going to look at is a little bit more challenging. What we're going to do here is again find the equation of a line, but this time we're going to try and find the equation of a line that's either parallel or perpendicular to a given line and passing through a given point. So in these problems, they're going to give you an equation of a line that you want to be parallel or perpendicular to, and you want to pass through a separate point. So as we work through this next example, I will talk through our four steps here. Let's visualize first what's going to go on here. We have the equation of a line, uh, we're looking for the equation of a line passing through 2 comma negative 1 and parallel to the line having the equation 5x equals 2y plus 10. So just to visualize here, I'm not going to sketch this equation too carefully, but just to give you an idea, this might be something that you know looks like this, for example. So here's the equation of that line right there. We also have given to us the point 2 comma negative 1. Whoa, crazy, crazy lines here. Let's erase. So next thing we want to do is plot this point that we were given, 2 comma negative 1, so maybe that's right about here. So what are we looking for in this example? We're looking for the line, I'm going to use a different color here, that passes through that point and is parallel to the line that's given. And hopefully you can see there's only going to be one line that does that. There's only one line that's parallel that's passing through that given point. So how do we figure out the equation of that red line? Well, we know that it needs to go through 2 comma negative 1. So we have a point. What we're missing is a slope. So we need to find the slope of that red line. Well, to figure that out, you have to remember that parallel lines have equal slopes. So if I can find the equation of the blue line, the slope of the blue line, then that must be the same slope that I need for my red line. Okay? So step one up here, backing up to our guidelines, is going to be to find the slope of the given equation, which in our case is that blue line. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is find the slope of the equation 5x equals to 2y plus 10. Now how do you find the slope from an equation? You have to put it into that y equals mx plus b form so that you can identify what that m is, what that coefficient of x is. So let's take this equation and solve it for y. So to do that, to isolate y, I'm going to start by subtracting 10 from both sides. So that'll give me 5x minus 10 equals 2y. And now to finish solving for y, I'm going to divide every term by 2. So we get y equals 5 over 2x, or 5 halves x, minus 10 divided by 2 is 5. So here's the equation of the line we were given. It's exactly the same equation, it's just put in a different form. The reason we put it in this form is so that we could find out what the coefficient of x is so we can identify the slope. So the coefficient of x here is 5 halves, so that's the slope of our line. Now, step 2 is to use that same slope, since we want parallel lines, this is the abbreviation or symbol for parallel, just two little vertical lines like that. Our parallel line slope should also be 5 halves, because remember, parallel lines need to have equal slopes. So our line, let me use my red again here, needs to have a slope of 5 halves. What else do we know about our red line? It needs to go through 2 comma negative 1. 
So we're going to take our point and our slope and we're going to put it into point slope form. So that's going to be step three. Use point slope form. So remember that's going to be y minus your y value. And the y value of our point is negative one equals the slope. The slope we found out that we need is five halves parentheses x minus our x value, which for our point is two. Now all we have to do is clean all this up. So that's going to be step four. We have a double negative on the left, so we get y plus one. Distributing the five halves across gives me five halves x minus five halves times two, or two over one. Remember when you do top times top over bottom times bottom, you can cancel along the way if it's possible. These two twos cancel out, so I'm just going to get five over one, or five. So five halves times two is just five. Now to finish simplifying here, we're going to solve for y, isolate that y. So let's subtract one, and we get y equals five halves x minus six. And there's the equation of our red line. All right, that's pretty complicated. There's a lot of steps there, so it's easy to get confused. So let's review the steps, and then we'll try one more example. First thing you want to do is take the given equation, solve it for y, and use the coefficient of x as your slope. And that gives you the slope of your blue line. In this example, we want it to be parallel to that blue line. And since parallel lines have equal slopes, we determined that the slope of our line should also be the same as the slope of the blue line. Once you have your slope and the point that they originally gave you in the problem, you plug those in to your slope, point slope form, simplify, and you're done. So let's try all of that again with one more example. So in this example, we have to find the equation of the line passing through negative 1 comma 4 and perpendicular to the line having equation 2x plus 3y equals 8. So again to visualize here, we have some random line wherever it is. We have our point negative 1, 4. But this time, we are looking for the red line that is perpendicular to our blue line going through that given point. So we're looking for a red line with a different slope this time than our blue line. What do we know about perpendicular lines? We know that perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. So if we can find the slope of the blue line, then we take its opposite reciprocal and that will give us the slope of our red line. Okay? So to begin with, you always want to start with the given equation, which in this problem is 2x plus 3y equals to 8, and you want to find the slope of that line. We find the slope by solving for y. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. That gives me 3y equals 8 minus 2x. Then I'm going to divide through by 3 everywhere, and that simplifies to y equals 8 thirds minus 2 thirds x. Now the only part of this equation that we want is the coefficient of x, because once we have it solved for y, that coefficient of x is always your slope m. So negative 2 thirds is the slope of this blue line. So what does the slope of our red line need to be? Remember, it's supposed to be the opposite reciprocal. So what's the opposite reciprocal of negative 2 thirds? Well, the opposite would make it positive, and the reciprocal would flip it over to 3 halves. And this little symbol here, this sort of upside down T, stands for perpendicular. So our perpendicular slope must be 3 halves. So we need a slope of 3 halves. So now that we know the right slope to use, and we also have this point that they gave to us in the original problem, we now have a point and a slope. 
So in step two, we're going to use the point slope form. So that's going to be y minus the y value 4 equals our slope m, which was 3 halves, parentheses, x minus the x value, which was negative 1. And now we want to simplify. So we have y minus 4 equals, got a double negative over here, and when I distribute my 3 halves across, 3 halves times x is 3 halves x, plus 3 halves times 1 stays 3 halves. Now to finish it off, we want to add 4 to both sides, because we want to try to solve for y and isolate it and combine like terms. So we get y equals 3 halves x plus, and now we need to figure out what 3 halves plus 4 is. There's many ways to do this. You could think of 3 halves as 1 and a half. So if we add 4 to it, that would be 5 and a half. That's a correct answer if you want to use mixed numbers. Or you could get a common denominator and realize that 5 and a half is the same as 11 halves. Or you could also use decimals, and this would be 5.5. .5. You can certainly use your calculator as much or as little as you need to here. So our final equation, y equals 3 halves x plus 11 halves. All right, so finding the equation of a line passing through a given point and parallel or perpendicular to a given equation. These are tough problems with lots of steps. All right, the next examples that we're going to talk about are how to find equations of special lines, vertical lines and horizontal lines. And this is basically memorization. If you're looking for a vertical line through the point A comma B, you have to recognize that all vertical lines always have an equation of the form x equals a number. And if we want to go through a comma b, then we need that x to equal a. So our equation of our line is just going to be x equals a. There's no re real work to do here. It's just remembering that we need to be of the form x equals. For the horizontal line, these are lines that are always of the form y equals a number. So we want to make sure that we equal the y coordinate of our point, which in this case would be the b. So the equation of our line is just going to be y equals b. So let's try some of these out. In the first example, we want to find the equation of the line, the equation of the horizontal line through negative 3 comma 1. So as soon as I see that I want a horizontal line, I know that that has to be y equals something. And what does it have to equal? it better equal the y value of the point we're supposed to go through. So the equation of our line must be y equals 1. In the next example, find the equation of the vertical line through 2 comma negative 1. Every vertical line is always x equals a number, and we better equal to 2 since that's the x value of our point. So this equation is just x equals 2. In the next example, find the equation of the line through 1 comma 5 with undefined slope. Now undefined slope is an indicator that you're talking about one of our special case lines. Which kind of line has undefined slope? Vertical lines. All vertical lines have no slope. So if we're talking about a vertical line, that must be x equals a number. What number do we need to equal? we have to equal that 1 since that's the x coordinate. Okay, the last example of this type, find the equation of the line through 1 comma 4 with 0 slope. 0 slope again is an indicator of a special type of line. What kind of line always has 0 slope? Horizontal lines. So if we want a horizontal line, then it has to be of the form y equals a number, and we better equal to 4. So the equation of our line must be y equals 4. Okay, to finish off our lecture here, we're going to end with two application problems. Application problems are just word problems, and we are going to see that all the information that we just talked about can be used to solve different word problems. So in this first example, we have a company that has learned that by pricing a newly released Frisbee at $6, sales will reach 2000 per day. 
raising the price to $8 will cause the sales to fall to $1,500 per day. Assume that the ratio of change in sales to change in daily price is constant, and let X be the price of the Frisbee and Y be the number of sales. All right, there's a lot of stuff going on here. The first thing you want to do when you read this problem is immediately recognize that we have two sets of numbers, two different types of numbers. We've got prices of Frisbees and sales. And two of these go together. For example, when the price is $6, the sales are 2000 So what we're going to do is make an ordered pair out of that. We're going to make a point out of it. And the problem specifically tells us which one should be X and which one should be Y. We're told to let X be the price of the Frisbee, and we're told to let Y be the number of sales. So if the price of the Frisbee is $6, that's going to be my X, and the sales is 2000 that's going to be my Y. So there's one ordered pair. In the next sentence, we get a similar ordered pair, but this time when the price was $8, our sales were 1500 So we've basically reduced this whole problem down to the question of find the equation of the line between two points. When it says in the problem, assume that the ratio of change in sales to change in daily price is constant, that's telling us that the rate of change, which is another word for slope, is constant. And what always has constant slope? Lines. So this problem is asking us to find a line through these two points. So we've done part A. We've listed our two ordered pairs. Part B, we're going to use those two ordered pairs to find the slope. And then because this is a word problem, we're going to investigate what that slope actually means. So how do you find slope given two points? You find change in y over change in x. So to find the change in y's, I'm going to subtract my two y values. I'll start with 2,000 and subtract 1,500. In the denominator, since I started with 2,000, I have to start with the 6 and subtract 8. So if we reduce this, 2,000 minus 1,500 is 500. 6 minus 8 is negative 2. And 500 divided by negative 2 is negative 250. So we found out what our slope m is. It's negative 250. Now we need to interpret its meaning. So how do you interpret the meaning of a slope? The easiest way to do that is to first determine the units that go on the slope. And how do you find units of a slope? You find the units of y over the units of x. So remember our ordered pairs here again. The x numbers were prices, the prices of our Frisbees in dollars. The Y numbers were our sales. So the units on the Y's are sales. The units on the X's were the dollars. So let's go back to our slope M. We found, re we found it earlier to be negative 250. And the units we just said should be sales on top over dollars on the bottom. And I like to take my slope number and write it over 1 to make it more like a fraction. That way I can sort of interpret what all this means a little bit more easily. So what this is saying is we have negative 250 sales per $1. Now what could that mean in the context of our question? Remember what we're doing. We're raising or lowering prices here and that's affecting how many sales we have. So if we think about this slope, it says that we lose, and the reason I'm losing is because this is negative, we lose 250 sales every time we raise the price by $1. And I'm raising here because this is a positive 1. So let's put this into words. What the slope means is that we lose 250 sales for every price increase of a dollar, one dollar. So every time we raise the price by a dollar, we're going to lose 250 more sales. So that's the meaning of our rate of change of our slope in this problem. Okay, so now in part C, 
we want to actually find the equation of our line. And remember, we had these two points up here, 6, 2,000 and 8, 1,500. And we just found our slope. So what we want to do next to find the equation of our line is use the slope that we just found, negative 250, and use either one of these two points. It doesn't matter which one you use. I will choose 6, 2,000. And now look at what we have. We have a point and we have a slope, so we're going to use point-slope form. And point-slope form is that y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. So we're just going to substitute in all our information into that. So this becomes y minus 2,000, since that's our y value, equals negative 250, since that was our slope, parentheses x minus 6, since that was our x value. And now we just want to clean it up. You always want to clean up your point slope form. So let's go ahead and distribute our negative 250 across. So we get negative 250x. Negative times negative becomes positive, and 250 times 6 is 1,500. And you can use a calculator for that. Then to finish cleaning this up, you want to get y by itself and combine like terms. So I'm going to add that 2,000 over to the other side, and that gives us y equals negative 250x plus 3,500. So there is the equation of our line. Okay, part D. Find the y-intercept and interpret its meaning. So in this example, we just found the equation of our line. It was y equals negative 250x plus 3,500. And what we are being asked to do now is determine what the y-intercept of that line is. Now notice what form this is now in once we've simplified it. This is in the form y equals mx plus b. And b is the symbol we use for the y-intercept. So we should be able to just look at this equation and know what b is because b is just going to be this constant on the end. So the y-intercept is exactly 3,500. Now what does that mean? What's the significance of that? Well, what do the y values represent? What are the units on the y values? If we go look at our points again, remember that in the two ordered pairs that we initially set up, the y values represented sales. So since a y-intercept is a y value, this is also sales. So we have 3,500 sales. But it's 3,500 sales when what? What's the x value when you have a y-intercept? Well, if you're a y-intercept, you're hitting the y-axis. So your x value is 0. And what did x represent? Let's go back to our points again. What were the units on our x's? x's were dollars or prices. So what does this mean? It means we have 3,500 sales when the price is 0, 0 dollars. So let's write that in a sentence. There are 3,500 sold when price is zero dollars. Now, if you think about that a little bit, if your price is zero, then you're giving them away for free. So 3,500 is probably the most amount of frisbees that this company could make. Otherwise, they'd be giving away their entire stock. All right, next example here, or next um, section part E here that we want to figure out is now we want to find the x-intercept and interpret its meaning. So we just found the y-intercept, now we want to find the x-intercept. So how do you find an x-intercept? Well, if you're an x-intercept, then you're hitting the x-axis, and we know that if you hit the x-axis, your y-value must be 0. So to find the x-intercept, we're going to let y be 0 and solve for x. Now where do we let y be 0? 
we let y be 0 in the equation of the line that we came up with. So we have y equals negative 250x plus 3500. We're going to substitute in 0 for this y. And that will give us an equation that we can now solve for x. So what I'm going to do here to solve for x is I will add 250x to the left side. So that gives me 250x equals, these cancel out, so I'm left with 3,500. Divide both sides by 250, and 3,500 divided by 250 turns out to be 14. So we found the x-intercept. The x-intercept is 14. What does that mean? What's the significance of that in the context of our problem? So think about your ordered pairs again. When we're talking about x's, x's were dollars or prices. So what we just found is that 14 is a price. When, what happened? How did we find that 14? We found that 14 when we let y be 0. And what was y? Y was sales. So the price is $14 when the sales are 0. So what does that mean? Well, it means we're going to sell 0 Frisbees when we set the price to be $14. So we will sell 0 Frisbees when the price is 14 so if you think about what that could mean, that means the price is too high. Customers aren't willing to pay $14 for a Frisbee. They consider it too expensive. So the company is not going to be able to sell any of their product. Okay? All right, the last example here for this problem, the Frisbee problem, is to predict the daily sales of Frisbees if the price is set at $7.50. And this is actually one of the most important ideas behind application problems. In mathematics, a lot of times what you're given is a bunch of data values, or in, in this example we had two data values, two ordered pairs. And what we did is we came up with a line that modeled this situation. If we have a good model, then we should be able to make predictions with it. And that's what this question is asking us to do. So remember what our model was. It was that equation of the line. y equals negative 250x plus 3,500. And what we're going to do with this is use it to make a prediction about how many sales we'll have when the price is set at $7.50. So the first thing you have to figure out is, what am I plugging in? What is this $7.50? $7.50 is a price, and remember prices were X's. So we're going to substitute in $7.50 for X. So we would get Y equals negative 250 times 7.50 plus 3,500. Use your calculator on that. When you punch it in, you get 1,625. And we want to put some labels on this because this is a word problem. So 1625, what does that represent? Remember, that's your Y value. And what did Y represent? Y was sales. So that means when the price is 750, we will sell 1,625 Frisbees. And there's our prediction. Okay, that was a long problem with lots of pieces to it. We're going to try this one more time, one more word problem. All right, the last example here says the value of a building bought in 1990 appreciates or increases as time passes. Four years after the building was bought, it was worth $165,000. Seven years after it was bought, it was worth $180,000. If this relationship between the number of years x past 1990 and the value of the building y is linear, write an equation describing this relationship. So 
Again, what we're trying to do here is come up with the equation of a line going through a couple of ordered pairs. So our first task here is to identify two ordered pairs, an X and a Y, that go together. The X's, they're telling us exactly what to do here. The X's are the number of years past 1990, and the Y's are going to be the values of the building. So X is number of years past 1990, and Y is the value of the building. So what year and value do we know go together? Well, the value of the building in 1990, that's when we bought it. Four years after it was bought, so four years after 1990, it was worth $165,000. So the number of years past 1990 is four, and the value was 165000 Those two go together, so I'm going to make an ordered pair out of it. Okay, similarly, seven years after it was bought, it was worth $180,000. So when the time is seven, the value is 180000 Those two go together. So I have my two ordered pairs. So this problem has now been reduced to find the equation of the line between these two points. All right, so how do you start that? How do you find the equation of a line between two points? You must find the slope m first. And we do that by change in y over change in x. So my y's are the values. I'm going to subtract 180,000 minus 165,000. And then I'm going to divide that by 7 minus 4, the difference in my x's. If we reduce here and simplify, we get 15,000 on the top. 3 on the bottom, and that becomes 5,000. So my slope m is 5,000. Once you have your slope, pick either point. It doesn't matter which one. I will use 7, 180,000. And now we have a point and a slope, so we're going to use point-slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1, and we're going to substitute in. So we'll get y minus 180,000 equals our slope, which was 5,000, parentheses x minus our x value, which was 7. And now we clean it up. So y minus 180,000 equals, let's distribute, we get 5,000x minus 35,000. Then to finish solving, let's add 180,000 to the other side to combine like terms. So we get y equals 5,000x plus 145,000. And here's our equation. We found the equation of our line describing this relationship. Okay, so now in the next part here, we're asked to interpret the meaning of the slope. We already found out what the slope was. Okay, remember up above, the slope was found by doing the changes in the y's over the changes in the x's, and we ended up with 5,000. Whenever you're asked to interpret the meaning of a slope, always start by writing down what units should be on the slope. So the units are determined by the units of y over the units of x. So what did y represent again? These y values in my two ordered pairs were the values of the building. So these would be dollar values of the building. The x values were years, time. Okay, So the, the units on the x's would be years. Now what I like to do is to take my slope put it over 1, and then I kind of read with units what this is saying. This is saying $5,000 in value per one year. So what could that mean in the context of this question when we're talking about how the value of the building increases over time? Well, this must be telling me that the value of the building
increases, and it's increasing because this slope is positive, by $5,000 per year. So we have just calculated with that slope basically the rate of change of the price or the value over time. So $5,000 increase in price and value over each year. Okay, the next example. Find and interpret the meaning of the y-intercept. Now the y-intercept, remember, that's also known as our b. So if we've already solved for the equation of our line, which we did up here earlier, and the equation of our line was y equals 5,000x plus 145,000, we should be able to just look at this equation and know what the b is because it's already in slope-intercept form. So the b is just the constant on the end, the one without the x. So this is saying that the y-intercept must be 145,000. What kind of units are on y's again? Remember how we defined our points? These y values were values of the building, dollar values. So this 145,000, since it's a y, is a dollar value. So that means the value of the building is 145,000 when what? When is the value 145,000? Well, what time were we looking at when we have a y-intercept? What's x when we find a y-intercept? A y-intercept occurs when x is 0. So in this case, when x is 0 means what year? Let's go back to our problem again. When x is 0, what year are we referring to? Well, x is the number of years past 1990. So if we are 0 years past 1990, then we're right at 1990. So the value that we got for our y-intercept, this $145,000, is the value of the building in 1990. So let's write that all out in a nice sentence. So in 1990, which just so happens to be the year the building was bought, the value or price of the building was a hundred and forty five thousand dollars so the y-intercept was when x is zero and in the context of this problem that meant in the year 1990 the value of the building was a hundred and forty five thousand okay our last problem here is a prediction. All right, so we want to use the equation that we have found earlier, which is this y equals 5,000x plus 145,000, and we want to use that to estimate the value of the building in the year 2000. So you want to be a little bit careful here. We know that x's represent years, but it's a little tempting sometimes to take 2000 and substitute it in for x that would be incorrect. That would give you the wrong answer because remember how we defined x again. x was the number of years past 1990. So if we want to know about the year 2000, that's going to be 10 years past 1990, so that would mean an x value of 10 that we should be using. So over here, year 2000 corresponds to an x value of 10. So when we do our substitution, we should be substituting in 10, not 2,000. So let's plug in 10 for x. Punch that into your calculator. And when you do that, you get 195,000. And let's just write out what this means. 10 was the year 2,000. So in 2,000, the value of the building is one hundred and ninety five thousand dollars 
and then we're done. Alright, that concludes our lecture on writing equations of lines. Good luck!